was Andrew Jordan, uh, 23 years old, and I started racing when I was 14. My dad raced since he was 20, and actually met my mum when her dad raced. When I was 14, I went to, went to him and asked if we could go and do. There was a, a, a British Junior Championship in Rallycross, which is a mixture of tarmac and dirt. Fortunate enough to, to be British champion, which is fantastic. And then we came on to the circuit racing, which is the British Touring Cars. And this is my fifth season in it now. I think it's in its 54th season now. So it's been going a, a fair while, and I've gone through lots of different eras and different styles of cars. Always been touring cars, saloon cars. In the past, there's been lots of manufacturers in it, and it would be that if you were an independent team like ourselves, that there'd be no chance of competing for overall wins or overall championships but now there's only a couple of manufacturers in it and the rules are, are set out in a way that the independent teams like us can compete and take it to the, the bigger teams who are this year. Jeff Smith, uh, 46 years old, met my wife when I was late teens. We went off kart racing, uh, 26 years old. A few years ago we moved into touring cars, initially with the, the Vectra, and more recently, obviously this season, we've, we've uh, jumped into a, a Honda Civic. Are you third or fourth group the team is Eurotech Racing, which runs it on behalf of Pertec Racing. My dad set that up about 25 years ago, which the, the team ran a lot of racing cars for him and run customer cars in different styles of racing. Team Pertec, uh, headed up by Mike Jordan, Andrew's dad. It's a very, very close close team, quite a small team, but very, very well managed. There's about yeah, four or five people per car. Obviously, we've got two cars. So over a weekend, with a few added extras, there's about 14 people. Each car will have an engineer, and then it will have three people on there, plus someone that's in charge of all the wheels and tyres. Between the two of us, we make a, a pretty reasonable team. Oh, my mates, I've known Jack, my number one. I've known him for, I think, 11 years. He started working for my dad when he was 16. He's now 26 or nearly 27, I think. So I've known him for a long time. So Adam, my engineer, is one of my best mates. He's also my brother-in-law. Um, so a bit different. So we get on very well. And I trust them and they trust me. And I think in some teams, you can kind of get the atmosphere that to them it's just a job. These guys want to win as much as I do. So they put, put more than enough effort in to get the, the results we do. I've come in as the... Uh, second driver. My sponsor is uh, is ICD. The main team sponsor from, from Andrew's side is, is Pertec. Touring cars, as I say, the, the, the premier championship in the country, it, it's sprint racing, so you have on a, on a Sunday, you have three 25 minute races, three of those in the day. Um, and if you ask anyone about touring cars, there's normally quite a bit of contact between the two cars. That's one that makes the, you know, the TV viewing figures are huge. That's because the racing is so exciting. And because of all that, it makes it possible to get sponsors um, on board as an advertising opportunity with the TV package they've got. It, it's fantastic. I'm the marketing manager for Pertec UK. Um, so I'm, I manage the, the sponsorship and the hospitality for the British Touring Cars. Because we get so much exposure from the racing, um, people automatically assume that that is what Pertec is, that it's a racing team. In actual fact, we're an emergency hose replacement service. So similar to the, the AA, we have a number of franchises that are based all over the UK and Ireland. They will go out and form emergency hose replacements or repairs. 2010, they, they came on board as team sponsor which is what what they are now it's the whole Pertec racing the whole cars in their livery that the hospitality is all Pertec racing we get all of our branding on the car um, as well as the the lorry the unit and everything else Pertec's a massive help to us going racing obviously we can't do it without them put a lot of time and money into us and hopefully we're paying them back by showing them how good the car looks and how quick it is and who's doing a good job driving it so. Steve Maguire from Pertec in uh, Nottingham and Mansfield. We're a six van centre. I, I do think that the distinctive car, uh, especially now under the banner of Pertec Racing, really does make the car stand out and the exposure on TV. I think that brings a lot of interest into Pertec. We're, we're signed up already for, for 2013 so that'll be our fourth year of being successive Pertec Racing with them being outright sponsors. It's really nice to see it growing as a sponsorship and a partnership that's getting bigger and bigger each year. I 
think some people probably come to the racing on the, on the Sunday and just think it's all like this anyway. Actually, we, us as a team and the hospitality unit comes here on a Thursday, starts as nothing, and then we as a team have to set, you know, lay the carpet down in the garage, set all the garage display boards. Usually on a Thursday the, the hospitality unit will arrive, um, there are a team of five guys that will pretty much put, put that up from start to finish. We get given our, our spot um, and allocation on where we're going to be placed. slowly throughout that day start to offload all of the components that build this unit. All the flooring goes down, the awning starts to go up and go together. In the meantime, the team will have arrived with um, all of the, the partitions and everything. Unloading the cars, they go into the garage um, and they'll do whatever work needs to be done with the cars. the truck, get the truck washed, get everything looking immaculate because image is a huge part of this sport as well. The same with the hospitality unit, that comes here on a Thursday lunchtime, everything gets clean, set up, so it looks pristine for when the guests arrive. It's um, a lot of work, probably more than people would imagine goes into it to get it looking like this. build will carry on with, with the hospitality unit. Um, I typically arrive um, on a, a Friday and I will then start, once the unit's all put together, I then start to um, add the finishing touches, make sure all the, the coffee pots and everything are out, make sure all that's set up, everything's working properly. Making sure that the uh, merchandise stand is up, all the things that really are more linked with the guest, you know, making sure that they have a good day. And we decided that because Andrew's profile was getting much, much bigger um, throughout um, the season, that we wanted to do something um, much bigger and better for, for touring cars, and also something that would give. Uh, more of a, a hospitality package to our centre so that they could bring their customers along. So we, we came to have a look at the, uh, at the unit that we have now. Straight away I think we decided within seconds of seeing it that yeah this was the unit that we wanted to have. This works perfectly for us because we've got the facilities to be able to offer um, food to the guests and also the space obviously to be able to accommodate the numbers that the franchisees wanted. One of my guests today took one look at it and said this is a fantastic setup you've got here. So I think that counts for a lot. Before the meeting even starts and, and pretty much immediately after uh, the last meeting, the guys, uh, the two Adams, will be looking at data, analysing um, where we could have gained a little bit from the previous meeting um, and looking at the car setup and taking into account uh, where we're going to. Before a weekend, I end up uh, creating a uh, setup sheet which I issue to the mechanics and they basically build the car to, to that sheet. They might be looking at um, you know, comparison of corners um, and, and where we can find a little bit of um, something extra basically when we go to the next circuit. So that happens virtually straight away on the, you know, on the Monday, they're looking at those sort of things. Basically after a race weekend, you set the cars up at work, we've got a flat floor at work, pull the cars apart completely stripped and engine gearbox, um, all the corners come off. Basically just look around it and make sure um, everything's all right. We then come to the circuit here, we'll do another, set up another flat floor and double check all that. Fine tune the cars and get as much as we can out of them. Quicker. 
those guys from an engineering side or a data side of things are looking at that immediately we finished a meeting and then we come into the, the race weekend the guys are getting here on a on a thursday they'll uh, go and do shakedown on thursday we go to a shakedown which is just to check um you go to it's a proving ground so you, there's not any circuits there but you can check everything's okay because the cars come apart so much it's not a case of just kind of cleaning them and sending them to the next race they're completely stripped down and it's only really the interior it's left together everything on the outside is taken off it and checked and checked for cracks or for kind of fretting marks or anything like that <laughs> During shakedown, they'll, they'll bed brakes. They'll perhaps do two or three sets of brakes, uh, ready for the race weekend. With the new brakes, you can't just put them on and they'll be there straight away. You've got to bed them in, which kind of brings the two materials together, so then you've got the best friction possible. Back at the unit, and they'll reset the cars back up here so that they've got the same uh, setup uh, levels and the setup patches exactly right for the car. Um, obviously, it's the new NGTC cars, so you've got quite a lot of uh, areas of freedom for setup. The obvious ones are your camber, uh, tracking, so your tow ins, tow outs, your spring rates, your anti roll bar rates, your damper clicks, your geometry, which can include getting your rear wheels to steer and things like that. So there's quite a lot of freedom with regards to that, even with the new regulations. It starts on Saturday with a, a free practice session, um, normally about half nine in the morning. First chance really you get to see um, of how your weekend's going to maybe go pace-wise. The guys will then start and look at you know what uh, different things we're going to try in free practice one. Generally for me, free practice one consists of a, uh, a reasonable bit of a run and just get into the circuit and get a feel for, for what's going on. In free practice one you'll do a, um, a race run which is just replicating a race really. So. Um, you'll go, for, say around here if it's 25 laps, um, you do a 25 lap run to see how the car deteriorates and how the tyres last. <laughs> try a few things with the car to improve it and, and some obviously make it worse but you've got to try them to see if they make an improvement. Now it might be that, that I feel the car's you know, absolutely spot on, what they give them is really good. We'll still work through changes because it may be that you know we, we find a little gain. There's certain things you know you're going to try, certain things that are good, you think are going to work on the car that you want to try in a session rather than a race. Free practice two, we're tending to look to try and get the, the ultimate setup for qualifying, ultimate speed, um, to try and get a fast lap for qualifying. Then free practice two, brand new tyres on, we'll put our qualifying setup on, which again is a bit more aggressive, whereas I said the race setup. Um, or the race when you have to conserve your tyres. The driving side is very aggressive just to get that one or two lap speed out of the car and out of the driver. So we'll do that um, in free practice two and, and see what the data looks like and how I've performed and how the car's performed. We basically get all the data through the car. The car has a lot of sensors on it. So basically Adam on his computer tracks the car around the circuit, gets a big map and then he can just he can see then what the car's doing here. He gets a lot of that then on the laptop and he can go through it then with Android. <laughs> Communication is pretty key. During a session we have the radio headsets where he's plugged in with his helmet so he can talk to me and I can talk to him. Um, it's quite key to feed him with as much information as he can take on board. So I'll talk to him ideally when he's just coming out of the slow corner uh, and you don't want to be talking to him just as he's about to hit the brakes. With the radio communications, Adam's very good at that because he picks and chooses moments very carefully. The most annoying thing that anyone can do is when you're just turning into a corner, a very high speed corner, 
to speak on the radio. Um, Adam's very good. He looks at kind of the set to times on the lap which come up on the TV screen. Um, he can see where I am on the circuit and talk to me on a straight, which is absolutely fine. So he's very good at that. And then when he comes in, I try and get him to debrief as briefly as possible, like the main areas where we're struggling on the in-lap. So it gives me a bit of time to think before he comes in and sort of at my toes. But equally, we kind of make it very brief. You don't want to be chatting for long because obviously you're then getting ready for the next corner. So it's really nice and important to have someone you get on with one or two on the radio, but equally that you both understand each other and have a good working relationship. Obviously, I've got to relay what I think I need to do to my mechanics, um, and it's got to be quite clear and quite quick for those guys to get on with the job. The last thing you want is to be chatting away with Andy for two minutes in the pit lane and the guys on the car are just stood there doing nothing. So try and give them stuff to do uh, as quickly as possible. Ready for a session, you can see we've got the live timing. This is another session that's on at the minute. It'll come up purple if you're fastest of anyone. The driver always wants to know where he's losing time. This is basically a driver comparison. So you've got your speed trace, which is this one. This one's your steering trace. This one's your RPM. And you here that have the brake trace. And then through the middle, you have a time loss. So they're the sort of things that I tell the driver in the session where he needs to improve. I can tell him you need to be braking five meters later, or you need to be not as hard on the brakes. You need to carry more speed through the corners, etc. <laughs> make little notes of each corner, you put what you need to make it better and some general notes and you do this for each run of the car and of the session just to try and give Adam some feedback weekly so I, I keep them all from each race. There's lots of variables on the car to change so as much info as you can save from previous times you've changed it the better and the easier it'll make it. So that's the stuff I'm going through between sessions and after trying to give Andrew driving tips where, and I'm trying to look at ways to make the car go faster. I'll give the instructions to the mechanics to go and change the car. The first two sessions are all about basically getting as much as we can out before qualifying, make sure there's no problems with the car. Andrew and Adam will be discussing on the radio what sort of changes they want to do to the car and then they'll tell me, Ryan and Ben, to get on with that and change little bits here and there. More than one car in a team is better because you've got data to compare, so I can compare to Jeff and Jeff can compare to me on the data. Equally, we get Honda's data and they get ours. It's great for me as a driver to have three other people that you can look at and see their different techniques through different corners. Between us, we've, we've got a good database we can look at. And so we, we're building a, a big library of uh, changes. Uh, the tyres are critical, um, so it's coming up with the tyre pressures and a tyre plan. 18 new tyres for race weekend and 6 carryover tyres. The pressures uh, are key, so they need to come in at a specific hot pressure, so we always set them cold. There's no tyre warmers or anything like that, so they go out cold. Obviously with a front wheel drive car, that's fine for your front wheels, but you need to try and generate some heat into the rear. On a front wheel drive car, it's very hard to get tyre temperature. When they're cold, obviously they don't give off the grip, so you'll go out and it's much easier to get heat into the tyres on the front. So what we'll do, we'll go out actually with our rear tyres on the front. One or two laps will come in, put those tyres off the front, which are then for the rear. The ones that were on the rear onto the front, which are now cold, you can then go and it gives you the more rear grip. Obviously you don't want to go around with, with no tyre temperature in the rear or you'll end up spinning. It takes a little bit of time but then when you've got it on it makes your performance. One, you can go and hit a lap time much easier and much quicker um, but it gives off better grip for the, the rear of the car. I'm Paul, I look after all the tyres, help with the tyre team on the two cars. We set the pressures up at the start of the weekend. Because air can be unstable, we actually, when the tyres come from Dunlop, when they're all fitted on from Dunlop, they come with air. We actually bleed them out, bleed all the air out, fill them with nitrogen. This gives the air more stability and a, a better reading, so the tyres more stable for the driver when they're driving around the circuit. Ideally, we'd record where each tyre is and what position it's been in on the car and how many laps each tyre has done. With the team, we've got uh, Sam, Jerry, they're currently washing the tyres, and we've got Mick and Neil who are helping out. Uh, currently scraping all the uh, pickup off the tyres. The tyres have obtained as the drivers have drove the cars around the track, so when we go racing tomorrow the tyres are all fresh and as new as they can be to give the drivers a better chance of a grip for when they're out on the circuit.
qualifying, it's a half an hour session, you normally do three runs, so you'll have three sets of tyres and you'll do about two or three laps on each of those, so you get three runs, driving as quick as you can on, on new tyres, which is when the car's old at its best. You have to start on a kind of 45 degree angle outside the pits and that's just the way the championship says it's got to be. I think it looks very smart and then the championship leader then goes out and, and your pits are all allocated in championship order. Qualifying is quite important, that's why we do a lot of work in the free practices. It's not often we do change in qualifying, we usually just do new tyre runs. Qualifying is pretty intense, hopefully we've, we've found where we need to be in free practice two for qualifying. You need to be relaxed and not overdrive the car um, and just get the, the very best out of the, the extra rubber that you've, you've been given. gets the quickest time is at the front and ideally that's where you want to be because come first race everyone's maybe a bit anxious to get going and uh, you don't want to be mid-pack because that's where all the carnage sort of happens. My session for a driver, very tense because obviously that then starts your, your race day so where obviously where you qualify you start your first race if you qualify really far down it means you're going to have quite a long Sunday but if you qualify up at the front it makes maybe Sunday that little bit easier. <laughs> It's all pretty stripped out and uh, nothing like a road car really, it's one seat. The steering wheel here, it's got quite a few switches because you can, that's a little mental note to myself. Just before I'm going on a qualifying lap, so as I say, the race tech seat, then I've got a moulded seat insert, so um, you know, any, any seat can't kind of grab you where you need to sometimes, so um, this is kind of a real personal thing, and so you, you spend probably about a day with a professional getting this all moulded to you in exactly the right position then they send it off and cover it so once you're in there really you can't move around and I'm a bit of a fidget so it keeps me um, still in the pit lane when the guys are working um, and then you've got here so you've got flash that's marked up so that's um, just a light flasher so if you're coming up in qualifying or race on a slower car you press that and it flashes the lights probably about 10 times. This orange button here is um, for line lock from the start especially if on a hill start. You build some brake pressure so you press the brake pedal as hard as you can press that button come off the brake pedal and then that holds the brake on. So when you want to start, you then let that go and that releases the brake. So it's just stop you rolling really, because obviously on the start, you have quite a few revs on it, so the vibration of the car can tend to start the car rolling. So that just holds that still. Um, yellow one is radio, so that's for me to talk to the, the team, talk. And then red one here, yeah, and pit lane speed limiter. So obviously the, I think it's 40 mile an hour, um, so that's 68 kilometers an hour. Press that and you can do whatever you want with the throttle, it will hold it at that speed. If you go over, you normally get um, a warning or then a penalty if you do it again. Um, here's dash, um, so that goes with the different um, settings we've got on the dashboard, different pages. There's kind of warm up page for the, the mechanics to the guys to look at and check that everything's working all right there. And I'll jump in and show you what we've got in here. It's a bit hard to get in, it's quite tight, so. And once you're in, you're in at that. And steering wheel on a quick release, so slide that back on. Gear stick, but flat shift sequential, so I can just keep my foot completely flat on the, the floor and just pull that, and that selects the gear. And again, as I said, no clutch on the way down, just left foot brake and push it down. And then lots of switches up here. We've got your normal indicator lights, rain light, screen, screen um, windscreen wipers, different settings for that, um, fuel pumps, 
your, your power steering, your light settings, your rain light, um, a reset button there, screen blower, your heated screen, your ignition, your start, so there's lots going on there. But to be honest, once you're going, you only really use a few of those. And up here you've got the shift lights, they'll go from green all the way up to red, and then as the red one goes on, you pull a gear. And we've got one brake bias adjuster here, which you can turn this. The brake bias is obviously the, the front of the, the brakes on the front of these cars are a lot bigger than the rear, so the, the front is a lot more slowing down. So you can change the proportion of if that's split front to rear. You can do it there, which is for more sensitive adjustments. We can do it there for which is bigger adjustments. So say if it's in a wet race. And on the dashboard you've got your engine oil pressure, your battery voltage, um, your speed or if you're stopped for the start, a throttle percentage, your gear and the revs. Um, oil temperature and water temperature so it's all um, pretty straightforward on there but to be honest once you're, you're, you're going that's in the static page once you're going then you'll have the lap time across the bottom that's obviously activated each time you go across the finish line um, your gear and that's all that you that you use really so you keep an eye on your oil and, and water tempers, temperatures pretty much nice big mirror it's the touring car is very close racing so it's important to see what's going on behind um, especially throughout the front um, and that's about it really it's uh, it was quite a busy cockpit, but once you get used to it, it's all, all at home, really. On race day itself, come 10 o'clock Sunday morning, when the guests start to arrive, we've got everything literally ready. They can have a coffee as soon as they come in. They can sit down and relax until the race starts. <laughs> and they don't really have to worry about anything else because it's all here and they don't need to go out and buy coffee and, and food and things like that. The aim is to make sure that everyone's taken care of within the unit. <laughs> You'll get some guests that come in that pretty much know, know the protocol, know how the day's going to work and you don't really have to sort of go through much with them and explain and then you've got others that you have to sort of step by step tell them what happens throughout the day. Richard, Richard we wouldn't do that, wouldn't we? Patrick. Some people are very excited because they've never really been to a, a, an event like this before. They've seen it on television but they don't really know what to expect. We we try and keep the day interesting because sometimes the time between each race can be quite long, especially if it's really bad weather, which it tends to be at a circuit because they're quite exposed. So we put together garage tours. We usually do four or five in a day. It just really depends on what the timetable's like. So my name is James Appleby. Um, I do the Pertec Racing Garage Tours. I've known Andy since 2008 when I raced in a support package in the Touring Car Championship. Tammy at Pertec needed someone to do the garage tours with someone with a bit of knowledge. I sort of stepped in when, when she needed me at Brands Hatch for the first round and she was like, right, we'll run this as a tester. And then it's just snowballed from there really and, and now I think we're looking to evolve the garage tours into something a bit more, more serious for next year. We usually run about four garage tours a day and we do that with probably about 30 people, depending on the amount of guests for the day, about 30 people a day just because it's really quite busy in the garage. The guys working on the cars, we don't really want to get in their way because obviously the guys out on track, that's the most important thing to have the cars right and uh, the garage tours are an extra for the guests to, to get involved with. So James will typically um, do the garage tour for about 15 to 20 minutes depending on how many guests there are. They then get an opportunity to take pictures of the car and if the driver's around and the mechanics and things like that, they can take pictures of the mechanics as well. It's quite difficult to sort of ascertain how complex and in depth the, the cars are manufactured to so quite a high engineering level. So it's really nice to get the guests in there and just, just sort of see things and like get them in the cars, having a look around the cars, sort of in the, the nuts and bolts and how does the thing actually work and function. Road shell, take it from a, a road on the Civic. So by coming on the garage tours really, you, you get an in-depth look at just not, not just the sort of Andrew Jordan and Jeff Smith of, of the team, you get to meet everyone from the number one mechanics, the tyre guys, which really sort of gives you an appreciation of that team sort of ethos. If you came as um, a, a general ticket holder just paying a, a gate fee, you wouldn't get that exposure and, and be allowed into the garage and have that access. So this is the Pertec Racing race truck. Uh, the two cars are loaded up in the top of the, the uh, unit and they're loaded in by a big tail lift that comes down the back. Inside the truck here you can see we've got all the, the racks here of all the different spares they're going to need. All the smaller stuff goes in here and they've got a bigger truck outside for, for all the bulky items. So in here you've got all your drive shafts, brake discs, 
and then all your air jacks and different things and batteries. You look into the front here, there's a, an engineering office where the guys pre and post session go in and do an engineering sort of debrief and how they can improve the car. This is where all the hard, proper hard work goes on and all the guys prep the tyres in between sessions ready for the next race. The NGTC cars use 18 inch slicks and you get with your allocation you get a barcoded tyre. Now that corresponds with the microchip there and then that also corresponds with the, a data number on the car and then those are checked between every session as the car comes into the pit lane. So we're in the front of the garage here now where both cars are in, got all the toolboxes and all the guys working on the car and as you can see we go straight out onto pit lane and then end of the pit lane straight onto the track. The Honda Civics are a two litre four cylinder turbocharged engine, roughly 340 brake horsepower front wheel drive with a six speed sequential gearbox so literally just pull the gear lever towards you to change up push it away from you to change down where here we've got the the Neil Brown engineering uh, race tuned Honda Civic engine now this engine puts out about 340 brake horsepower uh, turbocharged so you see the size of the turbo is a lot bigger than you'd get on your standard road car you've then got all the air intakes and uh, the air filter and stuff all in the front here now with the fuel cell being one of the the heaviest parts of the car as well as the driver and the, the engine in the front. You want to keep that in the center of the car as much as possible and as low down as possible. In the back here you've also got the, the rear subframe and then that's all joined into the roll cage to give it really good strong rigidity in the chassis. Yellow so we also offer grid walks and we take 10 guests onto the grid at a time. The grid girls will already, on, already be on the grid when we arrive. One at a time we bring the guests over and we take their picture with the grid girl and then when the cars arrive we also then call the guests across again and we take a picture with them with the grid girl and the car behind them. Just a nice keepsake to have uh, of a day that you know they might not have again and we do let everyone know as they have their picture taken that we have got the Facebook page and obviously that the pictures will be loaded onto there. I'm Hayley and I'm Grid Girl from Jeff Smith. Hi, I'm Danielle and I'm, I'm Andrew's Grid Girl. We actually have to stand on the grid and wait for the cars to actually drive up so they know where they're going. <laughs> it's a vital part for them it to is. know where. To look on at the map, we're almost yeah. like the map, aren't we? Public come on for their grid walk, so they get to have a walk around, and then we have lots of photos taken. Yes, <laughs> lots and lots of photos. I think a lot of grid girls are like really into their motorsport. Yeah. So we're like we of, grew up like watching yeah, MotoGP, like families are into it. Hi, my name's Gareth Thompson. This is my dad, Raymond Thompson. Today we've come to Silverstone for the Protec Hospitality because we really enjoyed it at Snetterton, so we came back for a second time. The grid walk, and we got on to the grid. We had we had to wait a little while till the cars assembled. Then we got our picture with the grid girl, and then we got our picture with the grid girl and the car behind us. Obviously, look forward to the garage tour, uh, and obviously the pit walk as well. I mean that. Uh, that is something that uh, I think people find quite special. I just think that the way the day is organised is absolutely brilliant. The fact that you get a grid walk is an absolute bonus. The garage tour is a bonus again. I uh, like a money can buy opportunity really to see behind the scenes and you would never get that in any other than motorsport. Touring cars has the biggest following, fan following in, in, um, in motorsport in the UK and, and arguably in Europe as well. Obviously, it seems like NASCAR in America, which is huge, but the population in America is a lot bigger anyway. So, um, you know, in Europe, this is one of the big, biggest motorsport series there is. And so, you know, they all come for a good day out and they all want to get their autographs and photos. Thank you very much. Good luck. That's called Pit Lane Walkabout. So basically, um, like Andrew and Jeff's fans, and obviously the other race drivers' fans, um, get photos, um, signatures. Yeah. The guys sign posters. Mm -hmm. We're handing out posters. The fans love it. The fans yeah. love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the fa one of the favourite parts of the day, isn't it? It's Quite fun time. and yeah. chilled, relaxed. Later in the afternoon we usually do a, a, a driver's interview, so the drivers will come over to the hospitality unit and they'll just do an interview and talk about how they think the day's gone so far. So you're having a good day, yeah? Yeah. yeah good, but I'll talk you through the weekend and, and what we do and what we try and achieve um, on the Saturday and then talk you how, how today's gone. Anything that has happened on the, the circuit that they might want to talk about, if there have been any accidents or you know any sort of dramas, they'll talk through those. And then the guests get the opportunity to, to ask the drivers questions. Chris, my number one, and Craig, number two, done an absolute sterling job. Can't believe it. With that sort of damage, then 
uh, just testament to the car really and the, you know, the safety devices we use now. After we've done that we usually do an autograph and, and um, picture session where uh, the guests can get autographs from the drivers and then get their picture taken with the drivers. So that's usually quite a nice end to the day just before the final race. Probably when I was a bit younger I started like, and I was in, in touring cars and because I was getting so stressed as I said earlier about when you're a bit younger focusing so much on driving a car probably wasn't as kind of fan friendly as uh, I should have been. Now as I'm becoming more experienced and, and getting a bit older and stuff like that is I've come for a good day out so me as a driver and as a team you need to try and help that experience so they can go away thinking he's a nice guy that was a nice team and, and Pertec Racing now is getting a huge following the amount of merchandise you see at the circuit being sold and the amount of merchandise or, or Pertec Racing gear that you see people wearing it, it's great to see and it's really nice for us as a team and me as a driver to see that you've got those those fans kind of following you and, and wanting to do well. Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. It's a very busy day, a busy Sunday. It's normally quite a late start. You normally don't race till about half eleven, twelve. So then you've got to get three races in before kind of half five. So it's a very busy afternoon. Race one is sort of mid to late morning. Keep the locals all happy with uh, keeping the noise down early in the in the morning on the Sunday. And then it's it's a full on day. There's three races to make it a more exciting day for the, the fans coming to watch. Really, in British touring cars, they used to do it that they used to have two races. Um, one would be a sprint race and one would be a longer race with a pit stop. But the problem with kind of longer races and pit stops is it sometimes can get a bit drawn out. Having three sprint races, it makes it that bit more exciting for the people watching. It makes it a bit harder probably for the guys on the team. It gives it less time for, the, for them to work on the car before each race. Generally, I go home on a Sunday night with a banging headache. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, that's our weekend. The team are always on really good form on race day. I think it's probably a, it's a lot of pressure for them because obviously they've got the sponsors here, they've got a lot of guests here, and they know that at the end of the day, everyone wants to see their team win. It's always very exciting when the race is happening and, and either Andrew or Jeff, you know, at, at the front, people are shouting and jumping around and screaming at the television if they happen to be in the hospitality unit. And then at the same time, you know, if we have a bad day, everyone feels it, you know, it's, it's disappointment all round. But generally, you know, people really enjoy the day and the excitement of, of being a part of this and, and having the exposure and getting so close to the drivers and the cars and everything else. Thank you.